starting with knee to chest. Lying on a mat, bring your right knee to your chest, using your arms to apply gentle overpressure. Repeat, bringing your left knee to your chest. Repeat four times each leg. The first question asks whether spondylosis is reversible. To answer this question, it is important to understand the pathophysiology of spondylosis. Spondylosis describes degenerative changes of the spine, most commonly of the intervertebral discs and facet joints. Because changes are degenerative in nature, spondylosis is not reversible as such. However, it can be possible to reduce the symptoms and progression of changes associated with spondylosis. Exercise is one way to reduce some symptoms, typically aiming to reduce pain, improve mobility of the joints and build strength of supporting muscles. The second exercise is lumbar spine rotation. Lying on the mat with your feet flat together on the ground and your knees bent, turn to bring your knees to your left. Repeat, bringing your knees towards your right. Again, repeat four times. When developing an exercise routine for spondylosis, it is important to consider including exercises from three categories. The first is exercises which aim to reduce pain and symptoms, such as rotation, as we are doing here, knee to chest, and child's pose. The second is exercises to improve mobility which move through ranges of motion, including extension, lateral flexion, rotation, and flexion. And exercises to improve strength, including bird dogs, glute bridges, and core exercises. The third exercise is child's pose. Starting on your knees and hands, bend your knees to bring your bottom toward your feet. Pause and come back up to your knees and hands. Repeat four times. The second question is how often to do exercises. And in general, pain relief exercises can be done as needed to reduce pain. And this could be daily. Mobility exercises can be done two to three times per week, one to three sets. And strength exercises can also be done two to three times per week. In general, three sets of eight to 12 reps. The fourth exercise is lumbar spine extension. Lying prone on your mat, come up to your elbows to create extension in your lower back. Repeat four times. While general guidelines can be helpful, there are other aspects to consider when deciding how often to do exercises. Some of these include recommendations by a physiotherapist or doctor. If a program has been recommended for you, this is a good place to start as it will be more tailored to you specifically. Pain or symptoms may be a limiting factor and it may not be possible to do every exercise when experiencing pain. And time available. Depending on the season of life you are in, there may be more or less time available for exercise. The fifth exercise is transverse abdominus activation. Lying on your back, place your fingers just inside your hip bones. Activate your transverse abdominus muscles by aiming to bring your belly button toward the ground. You should feel your TA muscles press up into your fingers. And what is the transverse abdominus muscle? The transverse abdominus muscle, or TA for short, extends from the bottom of the rib cage to the top of the pelvis, wrapping around the trunk from front to back. It is the deepest abdominal muscle. The sixth exercise is glute bridge. Lying on your back with your knees bent, lift your bottom up. Repeat eight times. And the TA is important for lumbar spondylosis for a few reasons. The first is core stability. The TA muscle, along with other core muscles, provides stability to the torso and subsequently the spine during movement. 
The second is intra-abdominal pressure. The TA muscle contributes to intra-abdominal pressure, which reduces the load on the discs and facet joints. And the third is postural alignment. Strengthening the TA muscles can help improve postural alignment to promote optimal biomechanics and reduce strain on the discs, joints and ligaments. Seventh exercise is lateral leg raise. Lying on your left side, squeeze your hip abductors at the side of your hip to raise your right foot up from the mat. Repeat eight times. And are exercises like running and skipping possible with spondylosis? In general, when starting exercise with lumbar spondylosis, it is important to choose exercise that does not exacerbate symptoms. These could be lower impact exercises, such as walking, swimming or cycling. Running and skipping are exercises that are higher impact, placing greater force through the spine when landing on the ground. This means that in general they can exacerbate symptoms such as pain more easily than lower impact exercise. What is important to note is that even though higher impact exercise may more easily exacerbate symptoms, it does not mean they can't be incorporated into an exercise program over time. The key principles are to start slowly, build on a foundation of core, strength and low impact exercise and gradually increase the intensity or duration. Monitoring symptoms during and one to two days after exercise. The eighth exercise is bird dogs. Kneeling on a mat, activate your TA muscle. Lift your right arm, attempting to keep the rest of your body still. Repeat with your left. Next, raise your right leg. Again, attempting to keep the rest of your body still. Repeat with your left. If you have a question on lumbar spondylosis that you would like answered, comment below. If you are unsure if you have the right exercise program put together, get your complimentary Age Fit with Test self-assessment to identify if you are meeting 10 key components of a successful exercise program. Head to www.agefitwithtest.com to get your copy. In this video, we covered four questions on lumbar spondylosis. Subscribe for more videos like this. To continue to manage pain, build strength and gain fitness in the meantime, watch these videos here. See you next time.